Okay, I think this is what we're going to go with. We've got... I got the Bluetooth headset on. I forgot to start off with that. I just woke up from a nap. Intense dreams. I have some friends in this place, wherever it is I've been dreaming about. And they were waiting for me to pull into town, and it was getting warm there. And they were telling me it was going to be warm. I was like, well, it was a little on the warm side, but I hadn't been outside yet. So I don't have that many friends anywhere, but they were coming in all right. Uh, my hearing seems to be showing some good signs. Uh, the right ear is kind of roaring, if you will, with a tinnitus. So I think it's coming back to life. The uh, um, I had to change hearing aids because the other hearing aid battery was wearing out. So I changed hearing aids. And this one's got a stronger Bluetooth connection, so I think you're going to hear this one a little bit better. And also, um, when I took my finger in my ear and rubbed it around the left ear, I can hear that it's kind of loud. And uh, the other side, it was nothing. It was deader than a doornail. Well, today, it's like I can just barely detect some sound off the hair in my ear canal. But when I... You know, really wiggle it around quite a bit. Doesn't make much much noise at all. So, and, and it's been getting, it's a bit of a distortion there. So, I'm hoping that maybe, maybe the, the steroids are working. And uh, I'm stuck here longer than what I planned on, for sure. But I know there's things I have to do. And I know that I'm in Yahweh's hands, and this is this is laid out specifically for me. Uh, there's something that I've got to do here, and I started working on it. I got one letter done. I got to do a cover letter because I'm copying this to another authority, um, and then it goes to a th another authority beyond that. And then hopefully this evening, my brother will call me uh, this evening and help me with this other stuff that I'm learning how to do. I really, um, I'm quite taken back with what's going on. I, I spoke to another brother at a distance and I told him exactly, exactly what had happened to me and all that. And he's like, well, I can't top that. And I'm like, yeah, well, um, anyway, we're looking for a passage in the book of Ezekiel in which it says you will look for a police officer, but you won't be able to find one. You shall look for a fireman, and you shall find none. We believe it's in the book of Ezekiel. He's called up several brothers, people that know the Bible really well. And this is mentioned one time, and it's an end-time prophecy. Uh, I don't like calling it the end times. It's the end of this earth age. It's not the end of all time for the earth. Well, I could be wrong about that, but I'm just giving you my guess. Now, I've got some training, and I have some intuition and I also know that Yahweh has kicked my butt with this stuff and wants to get my attention. He's got my attention, believe me. The problem I have is, is with me. Um, I find myself with a soft spot for somebody that really probably might have been trying to even kill me or, or could have. If she had realized how dangerous that I am, she would have killed me for sure. She would have overdosed my butt and left me here and I'd just be another one of those people that died on fentanyl or something like that. I really don't know. I really don't want to be that accusatory. But I am missing a few items. Um, I've been forced to go through this place with a fine tooth comb and uh, she did come to get a firearm from me and she got my prize. Uh, left behind the blue microfiber cloth which has not left the grip of that gun in more than a decade. So if it wasn't around the grip, it was over the whole doggone system as it was set up on the nightstand next to my bed. I do not like it when the police gaslight me. When the police throw their lot in with the criminals and gaslight me. That's that. So you cannot find a police officer today. Um... I think our society is deteriorated to the point where uh, I'm probably not going to get a lot of justice on this. However, I'm rattling some pretty serious cages with this. Um, th 
thank God he gave me the talents that I have for writing. So I've written a very good letter that's quite motivating. Now I get another, got to get another one down, a cover letter, so that this copy, this letter goes to a man with some authority who is elected to office and wants to stay in office. Um, I don't have much faith in our our authorities anymore, our institutions. Uh, we are not who we think we are. We are not the land of, of the free, the home of the brave. Um, I know that I cannot lift a hand to swat a fly unless Yahweh enables it and it's proper. Um, had a weird spider crawling on me and shoot it off. Then I went and used the vacuum cleaner because I'm afraid it. I hadn't quite seen something like that, but the hobos come out this time of year. And last time one of those things bit me, it took it took weeks before the the area healed up again. The physician I was seeing at the time treating me, he was quite excellent. He told me, no, we don't want to lance it. We don't want to do anything to it. It'll heal on its own, believe me. And it was like gelatin for like six weeks. It just was horrible. But it healed up and I didn't lose any tissue. What do you need to know? Well, you need to know that I am as talented as I am and as, as much as I can be a messenger, I am. I got my foibles. Um, letting you down? Well, yeah, probably. You find out the full story and everything. I mean, it's, it's I'm disappointing to myself to be had so easily. But this is the third sociopath that I've had uh, intimate crossings with. And I'm getting better at this stuff, but I'm really getting tired of it, too. Um, I appreciate your prayers. I appreciate you tuning in. What do I want from you? I, I want more prayers. Uh, the car that I wanted, by the way, another one, fine automobile, wonderful chariot. It got, well, I, I can't say it got sold out from underneath me, but it's gone. It's, it, it has been sold. It it was almost a quarter of a million brand new. It, had, it was two and a quarter, I think. The doggone thing had long eye, something to help you see at night. So it goes, you could see further than your headlights like three or four times. It had heads up display and a windshield. You didn't have to take your, you have to take your eyes off the windshield if you're driving. So I guess it was designed so you could really move even at night. And um, beautiful car, but it, it's kind of hard to uh, sync up three of these things together at one time and pull a train. I've seen it done in certain parts of the country, but in most parts of the country it's illegal. And I think just towing a toad back there and the length of this beast to begin with is not, a, it's not an easy thing. Pray for me. I did get the, 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 the first truck repair, got the part. So now it's prepping the coach, getting time, getting the appointment, getting over there and uh, getting stuff done. And I have a lot of work to do. I hope the, I hope the shop is, is talented enough to take this on and knock it out get it done right the coach should be tremendously safer once they're done and then i've got to come back and park here and do more things and get this medical treatment um i don't like these changes in hearing sensation um they bother me quite a bit I'm trying to take better care of myself. I'm not doing too good. The dog, the rain is, she's starting to so show signs of going in heat. I was expecting it sooner than this. Um, really want to breed her. She's going to be an excellent mother. I'd like her to have one litter of pups, maybe two, but no more. I don't want her to go through that much labor. Uh, she's in really good shape right now. Everybody thinks she's a male because she's, well, she's good looking. She's got a deep chest on her. But, you know, those people who really know this breed, would they would probably realize that she's a female. Um, been trying to get in touch with brothers to see how they're doing. There's been different people with different medical procedures around the country. 
Um, we have to enjoy what time we have here. I believe that my mission is to wake up my brothers and sisters in Israel. And I went to the storage room and I dug out this book. It's complete works of Josephus. A nice hardback, pretty thick. Good girl. And I'm going to get another book called Golgotha. And it basically is a book written about, about the crucifixion. And it pulls strictly from the Bible. And it's completely different than what you and I think it is. So I'm going to read that. The only problem is I don't like being so far out on the leading edge because you all get upset with me when I correct you and tell you what's up, what really happened. Now, the gentleman who wrote the, the temples at Jerusalem forgot, which I've had the paperback for quite a while. And at one time, that paperback was going for $400. You can get that. Um, his widow was offering print on demand for $30 a piece. They're probably $40 a piece right now. I highly recommend that because it basically tells you that there's no way they can build the next temple. Why is it impossible? Because the hill, Zion, was excavated and torn down by the Romans, and I believe that was in about 400 AD, because the Romans got tired because it was so defensible, and it cost them so much to get it back. Now, it could have been 175. I've got to look that up. Maybe this book will tell me that. I'm looking for the description of Yeshua, and there's supposed to be two eyewitness accounts written down, and, and both indicate he had blonde hair and blue eyes. Of course, I mentioned that to my, one of my brothers, and he ate that up immediately because that's what he was, cotton top with blue eyes. I said, man, I don't have that stuff, you know. I never had that. I'm not claiming it, but... This morning during Bible study, I had to enter a protest. And when I talked, everybody was happy. Your ears are here healed. No, no, they are not. Uh, but I have got a sign since then. Now, I had to protest. I didn't like what he was saying. But he was explaining Paul to me in ways that I had much better than I do. I've always had problems with Paul. I'll probably have problems with Paul and his works. For the rest of my life. It's not easy stuff. But what I disagreed with. Was his characteristic. Uh, characterization. The teachers today. His characterization. Of the Jew Gentile. Dichotomy. It's not a real dichotomy. It's phony as can be. It's really a poor dichotomy. And I told him I disagreed with that. Because. My mission, I believe, is to wake up my brothers, our brothers and sisters in Israel, the Israelites, and that there's a genocide going on right now, and that if we don't wake up soon, they'll kill us all, and they will. You need to understand, these people do a scorched earth kind of policy, and that's what they're trying to do. It was one of their hot shots in in. New York City, who announced that they were going to kill Amalek. Amalek was their enemy forever. And who was Amalek? He identified them as Western civilization. So it's not just the English speakers he's identifying. He's identifying all of the other European nations and that have different languages and all of the offshoots from them, America, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, uh, South America, uh, Chile, they pretty much taken down. Uh, it's really bad down there. So those people have to move and leave because there's going to be a genocide of white people down there. Now, I don't like this. We're a different species. That's all there is to it. I know. You don't believe me? Let me see. I've had this book for a while, Charles Weissman, and he explains the difference between race and species, and he breaks it down, and it's quite good. So we're a different species. Get used to it. It's not that big of a deal. You also need to understand that we all have remnants of the previous species on this planet, too. Not every species. We're a little different in that aspect. 
For instance, if you want to know where the Neanderthals are, it's mostly the Chinamen that got that, that blood, that DNA. Now, Peking and Cro-Magnon, I'm not so sure about those. But then there were a bunch of other species, including Dragon Man. And the main difference between Dragon Man and Caucasoid Man is they had thicker skulls. So they couldn't, the skulls couldn't be as penetrated as easily. But you also have to realize there was a race of giants that had paper mache skulls, and there's a bunch of them buried in a cave in New Mexico. They're not telling us where it is, but the witnesses that went in there said that these were, it looked like they were three, 400 pound dudes that were, uh, I guess, about seven or eight feet tall. Now, according to Google, which lies like hell, no human being's ever been found that was eight feet tall. Okay, fine. What are they calling a, a human or a man? Anyway, I want you to understand we've had some talented people. I have a nice library put together. Uh, if I had to do another coach right now, I would probably go up a level. I would go to about a 42 foot long marquee with a tag axle and the extra carrying capacity it could carry far more than this coach and I go for one more slide I don't think four is necessary or necessary but I go for one more slide and I had a, a, a Patriot Thunder lined up a 2004 very much like that with bookend matching wild cherry cabinets the grains were Oh, they did a really good job. The problem was the guy bought it and had it for a year, and he sideswiped a bunch of stuff on both sides, and he never did put an insurance claim and have it fixed, and he's got a lot of damage to it. And he wanted almost 90 grand like it was in mint shape, and I just I felt cheated. They set me up, but as a result of trying to get the money up for that, I got the money up for this one. So... Yahweh has blessed me. But you need something like Charles Weissman's book. Why? He's got like more than 30, almost I think it's 35 different species of man in there that are on the planet today. And there's other species of not man that look a lot like us that are inside and on the planet today. I shut the air conditioning in, in a, well, I, I cranked the temperature up so it would shut off so that we would have some peace and quiet and you could hear me better. Um, Josephus, Josephus um, I have problems with the name Christian. I am the one who challenged it. Uh, actually, my older brother, Russ, told me there should be no such thing, no such religion known as Christianity. And he always throws the challenges down. And I'm foolish enough to pick up the bait and go for it and try to figure out why. There's only one mention of the word Christ in a, pos in a possible positive sense in the scriptures from what I can tell. But there is a mention. Most of them, those, those, uh, those utterances are less than optimum. It's used as a racial slur. They were called Christians. And I tell people to help you understand it better, put son of a bitch on the end of it. It was like uh, when, I think his name was oh, Felix, um, told Paul, or maybe it was the other guy at the end of Acts, uh, you almost convinced me to become a Christian son of a bitch. So you need that helps you to clarify the context. They did not call each other Christians. They called each other brother and sister, and they call they called themselves follower of the way, and they called their their faith the faith of our fathers. It's important that you realize it it it, it was a a paternalistic society. Because the enemy has a, ma a maternal society. And the enemy came out of primarily Asia, which at that time was Asia Minor, the land of the Hittites. It's, it's an extremely complex, confusing 
thing to sort out. So I'm always looking for somebody that can clean my clock with the information that's better than what I have. And I met one fellow, and I don't know what kind of shape he's in right now, but he and I talked for more than two hours out in the parking lot after one Thursday evening out there, and at the end of it, I had to thank him, and he says, well, for and I says, because cause now I know what it feels like. Air conditioning. Yeah, I know what it feels like because he overwhelmed me and for two hours or so. And I used to do that to other people all the time and I thanked him because then I realized that wasn't a very fair way to treat my brothers and sisters. I don't want to lord it over you. Uh, but however, if I'm correct, I'm going to say so. I'm not, it's not going to be, well, you can have your opinion, I can have mine. It's like, no, man, I got it right. And you don't. That's all there is to it. Now, if you can correct me, I'm going to love you for it. That's all there is to it. And believe me, there are plenty of people out there that I, well, not plenty. I don't have, I can't just have these conversations with anybody. Uh, Russ told me that's what he enjoyed about my company so much. He said, I don't get to have this conversation very often. Can't have this conversation with just anybody. I don't like the sound of that air conditioner. The motor throbs a little bit too much. It's the original air conditioner with the old original refrigerant in it. And I'm not going to choose to upgrade and put modern stuff on there because it's not so good. So I will pay to have this one serviced, whatever I have to do to keep it going because it does a better job and it's more efficient than the new stuff. But you know, that's what they stick us with, these new standards that are less functional and cost us more. They do that to, to weigh us down all the time. So I've got my reading cut out for the summer. And it looks like I'm gonna spend more of my summer in the heat than what I expected. I'm really grateful for this rig. I've gotta lay down some protective material on the carpets and uh, protected from my little girl she's you know, she's leaking a little bit and I got to get it ready so that the uh, the mechanic can walk in with his boots and know that he's not going to be tracking grease all over the carpet or anything so I'm going to buy more of this plastic sheeting it's just the cost of, of uh, working on the rig at some point in time <laughs> as if the work is ever going to end I won't have to do that well hopefully I won't have to do it nearly as much but I want to be prepared. This is a nice rig, and they don't make them like this. Oh, I certainly wish I'd have gotten the other rig that had the, the beautiful wild cherry bookend matching uh, cabinetry. It was just magnificent. It had a kitchen island in the middle of it. Um, it was opulent, but it wasn't, I just couldn't afford it. I, I, I cashed in as much as I could, as much as I was willing to, and these people weren't honest with me and wouldn't send me good pictures and they didn't reveal things until later and they minimized the damage to the body and I said to them, do you get into a body shop? Get an estimate. They refused to do it. They didn't know any body shops. They didn't have any good people in California. Yeah, right. And I was born yesterday. I do think of you all the time and things to tell you, things that points that I want to make. And then typically, if I don't do it right away, it goes away. I'm hoping to get my life freed up to the point where I can just cue this thing up, this electronic leash of mine, and broadcast it and post these things. Because some of these things I, I come up with are very profound and very subtle, but I'm, I'm overloaded with information. And I'm overly stressed, so I don't hold my place very well. I've had two falls since I was drugged and robbed. I've had two falls. I haven't had falls in a couple of years. And in one fall, I, I wiped out my printer, broke it. I had to buy a new printer. I, I broke the input jack, the USB input jack on the printer, and it, it didn't have a Wi-Fi connection. So it was 
it was scrapped, it was junk. I took it in and recycled it. Just brand new toner in it too. So I have what appears to be a better printer. I don't like the interface much. It's nowhere near as fast, but it's an inkjet. It's not a laser printer. It's got a lot more functions to it. Um, I think I'm gonna enjoy it more. Getting it programmed up was way too taxing for me. Um, and I had a, another fall this morning uh, from an almost a kneeling position. I'm like, what the heck? I'm almost down to the ground to begin with. So I know that my inner ears have been hit by either stress or combination and by the drugs that I was, uh, well, I didn't accept it willingly. I, I realized how she administered the, that to me and it's quite embarrassing and you would think that a man like me would have been able to handle myself better, but uh, it was not something I expected at all. This wasn't her first rodeo, and everything she said to me was basically a lie. She played me like a fiddle. She's done this before. She'll keep doing it until she is stopped. They don't care to stop her. I think they like her out there or something. I think they want her to have more victims. I think it's horrible. So she ran into the wrong man. And I think if my spirit and her spirit have been communicating, I think the deal is simply she wants to somehow be consecrated and wants to stop what she's doing. So I'm gonna make sure that happens. Um, it'll be legally within the system that we're forced to live in right now. I do not like it. Um, I have to use it for this particular purpose. Um, it's sad that uh, a woman who is the progeny of a great, great, great famous individual uh, who has got very few survivors at this point came from a really small clan that one of his daughters is like this, and that another one of his granddaughters has been murdered by another family member. It appears, but who knows what really happened. I can justify it and come up with all kinds of rationality in which uh, such a death would be, <clears throat> do I say A-OK, -okay or kosher, or legitimate, or understandable, not chargeable, not murder at all even. But when you're dealing with sociopath, everything's peppered with truth, half-truths in it. So, I mean, it's a capital offense. I'm reporting it. That's all there is to it. I'm not backing off from that. And I'm making sure the proper authorities get it because these uh, local police, they told me they're not going to look into it whatsoever. So we'll see if a man in an, electro, in an elected office is going to be derelict in his duties. And, and if he is, then I don't mind taking his ass down. I don't mind exposing him, even though it means exposing myself for my foolishness. I think that's why she's able to get away is because she compromises men. Now, me, my family's gone. There's nobody to embarrass myself to except for you, and this is embarrassing. But I'm the victim of a series of crimes that she committed that are just really horrible. And then I, I just feel fortunate to be alive and to be here. I'd like to be able to say I'm all here, but I'm not. Um... I guess the really awkward thing is that part of me actually cares for her, even though she's not real. She'll never be safe for me or for anybody else, even for herself. She's a danger to others and a danger to herself. But who knows what, what might happen in the next decade? Because I think that if I was the judge, I'd be giving her at least 10 years on what she did just to me. And if they dig up other other victims, then I think that it would be much longer than that. And that might be the sort of 
timeout that she needs. She had a botched back surgery. She screwed up and didn't wear the back brace. And so maybe she can get that tended to. And uh, yeah, it's state expense. Well, she's got, she's got full medical benefits anyway as a member of the tribe. I just hope that her own people will not want to let her run free the way she is and run wild the way she is. I hope they won't see her as, an, as a person to have pride in, her activities to have some sort of pride in as she strikes back at maybe the white man or, or men, period. I just hope that they would be embarrassed by the situation, realize the damage that's been done to her, and um, uh, somehow give her a safe space for a decade in which she can correct herself, dry up, get properly assessed for polysubstance dependence, and uh, maybe blossom. Have some semblance of a decent life, even though she's she's harmed herself and she will never have a family or children most likely she's at the end of her ability to do that she probably has lost that already because she has used so well, so much birth control in particular but so many drugs and stuff that maybe it's best that she not reproduce Who knows, maybe she actually might become a healer with, with her talents. She should have been an actress, is what I think. A friend of mine says, well, the next level she could rise up to as far as being dirty like that would be a politician. I said, oh, no, no, she needs to be an actress. She just she says, oh, Hollywood. I said, yeah, she'd fit right in over there. Um, I hope you'll like this video. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. I would like to increase it by quite a bit. I have some things that I want to tell women in particular so that they might be able to better take care of themselves. Um, the problems that we have, the problems that women have, is that they were the ones that were deceived in the garden and nobody wants to admit that. Nobody wants to just say, yeah, Eve was deceived and she became a deceiver and she deceived Adam. And we have that trait that's common in women today. And they drive themselves crazy. And we know how they do that. And the problem is modern woman doesn't care about that. She thinks it's okay to be crazy. Well, we are gonna be hurting as a civilization and as a society very shortly in, in many domains, many spheres. And right now in Europe, 60% of their population are unsuitable, unassimilatable um, people that will never blend in. So they're going to have nothing but violence. And in this nation, we're headed in the same direction unless we form our militias. And unless we take out the trash, and by that I mean the elite in particular. And yes, I do mean the trash that's come across the border. We can't tolerate it. Not if we want a future. Not if we want a future for our children. I think we're going to have to reverse things on them. They're talking openly about white genocide. Death to the United States, they say. Well... There's only one circumstance under which I would chant that, say that it's acceptable. That is if you're protesting the corporations that claim to be the United States of America. Because they aren't. They're the corporations under the British crown, which is under the Pope. We really should go to war against Great Britain demanding our, our records, our personal papers back that they've under, had under lock and key since about 1812, 1813.
they're not our friends. But the people, not too bad. They're in dire straits. I don't feel like liberating them, to be honest with you. I just want to take care of ourselves right now. Yes, I think it's okay to turn inward and to be selfish. It's what's required. Our very survival is at stake. If we don't turn inward and take charge of our government and actually institute the government properly, the whole world is screwed. So when we turn inward and we fight among ourselves, that's perfectly acceptable. We are going to have to be willing to recycle our bodies just like an old eagle. It takes a long time for an eagle to go through that self-effacing and ritual that ends up in his rebuilding and lengthens his life. It's not a pretty picture. It's a horrible thing. But the eagle knows it must be done. Likewise, America must turn in. She must give up her beak, the old beak. She must give up her claws, the old talons. She must give up the heavy feathers that do no longer allow her to fly. So that proper feathers may grow in, so a new beak may form, so that new talons will form. She's not going to be eating very much for many days. She's going to be fasting. She won't be able to take food even from her mate who brings it to her. She's not going to be able to assimilate, chew it. She's not going to be able to touch it. It's going to be a difficult situation. So it is for America. We have a lot to learn from our native brothers here. We really do. Some of them have got Israelite DNA in them. Some of it's rather remote. And some of them also have got Nephilim blood in them too. Just like all the other species on the planet have been mixed up by those bastards. Some of them have got DNA from Solomon's time when the Israelites we're stranded here after a big storm broke up. The ocean-going fleet, the ships of Tarshish, were destroyed. It's in the Bible. It's an important historical event. It's in the Bible. I still believe, I'm still hoping and praying for a divine, massive, big Passover in which Yahweh will bless the earth rather than curse it because of us and our stench our vile vibration the devil and his children are intent upon reducing us to the basest qualities possible they want the most violent wars ever 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 that they only read about in History books of the distant past, the barbarians, they want that kind of a bloody war. They want to reduce this civilization. And I know you don't believe me. Well, go watch. I think it's the Smith Charity Dinner in New York City, which is always held after every election when the Cardinal is a host. And it is a fundraiser. Listen to Donald Trump. Listen to every word he says and realize he's telling you to your face that which you would not want to hear. It is a requirement. It is an initiation they go through. And he will tell you between the lines exactly what his purpose is. And everyone up there will understand him 
and be in agreement with him. It's a big party. You and I ain't in it. George Carlin, <laughs> he'd be proud right now. I really like the other George myself. George Patton. If he had survived, we wouldn't have gotten in this position at all. He was going to expose it completely. Old blood and guts led his men. They lost him several times deep in enemy territory. Those boys had to go after him to rescue his butt. They were willing to do it. I lost a really good friend a little while ago, last year. I miss him. He was better than I. He was better than my uncle. He set an example that was just outstanding. I can't live up to be half the man he was. Of course, there is a difference. You see, Wayne was tried in combat as a young man. He was the only man to survive his squad. And I got to befriend him. And I waited a long time, and he opened up to me bit by bit. He didn't tell me everything. I didn't ask too many questions. We're friends. We go out shooting skeet together. We go out hunting quail together. We didn't get to do much of either one, to be honest with you. And he had a depth of values about him that just was uncanny. Wayne fought in his youth for this country. I thought I had avoided that. That's what my father wanted for me. But I'll be fighting all the way to the end. That's my job, is to wake you up and to train you. Turn you into the good soldiers you have to become. Turn you into the good citizens. I'm not going to say good community members. That's for the communists. And by the way, Barack Obama wasn't about building community. He was about destroying community. I dare say I wouldn't be surprised if he was fathered by Papa Bush. Nothing surprises me anymore. And this stuff about the White Hats and him already being executed, it's bovine excrement. There are no White Hats. They say that stuff to give you hope, hopium to keep you paralyzed, to keep you off balance and off guard, that you might have hope where you should not place hope in a fellow man. Your hope is in Yahweh. I know, a lot of you say it's Jesus. No, that's his proper name is Yeshua. He, Yeshua was the example, and I don't know how to describe it. Seems like it was the same person, the same the same man, the same creator father. It's a great mystery still. He pointed us to our father who was his father. Yahweh decided to have a family here and he wanted us to run this place while in constant contact with him doing his will for the benefit of all the species on the planet. And, it, and we lost control. It got haywire. We were placed here for that purpose. Now, I don't care if you don't believe the Bible or if you don't want to believe the Bible. But what I care about is, do you honor the law of life? 
do you understand the necessity for abiding by the law of life, thereby being blessed, thereby having life? Because if you let these laws and these, these ordinances cease to exist, the Israelites cease to exist forever. This planet will be destroyed just like the other planets in the solar system. Mars is a perfect example. It's intact. You can see the streets with a good telescope that used to be populated when they had an atmosphere. And the asteroid belt, I think there's been modeling done in which they roll it backwards and they show how it was a planet that was destroyed. Is that the fate you want for our mother earth? We are all her children. You won't exist anywhere else. You get most of your genome. Most of your genes don't come from your parents. They come from the earth, from the bionome, from this environment you live in. I don't want to leave it. It's home. I dare not. I dare not leave it. I don't think it's possible at all. I saw a picture of Salman Rushdie. Looked just like that jackass that gave us eyes wide open. Stanley Kubert. Except Salman Rushdie was a little older, not much, a little heavier, not much. These people reveal themselves. They play many roles. They change their names. They reveal themselves. I'd also want to get a marquee because the air conditioner would be quieter. But it's really luxurious and I'm not comfortable in one of those. This feels like home and this is luxurious enough. It's uplifting. This was prepared for me. May Yahweh bless me. May he bless you. May we all bless Yahweh. Yate.